to Muck House, it is time to bring back the resort reviews. So if you're new to the channel, this is where we break down a ski resort from 10 topics. We rate each topic from zero to 10. Zero being not applicable, they don't have it at all. One being terrible, five is average, and 10 is best in the world type quality from lifts to prices to, to runs. So we're gonna go over all of it today. And the resort that we are reviewing is Timberline Ski Resort, but not in the winter, in the summer, because Timberline does summer snowboarding. So we're gonna review Timberline as a summer ski resort. And then we'll do another review of Timberline for the winter ski resort, because there's so much more accessible during the winter than there is in the summer that I don't feel like we could justify one review for both. But at the end of the video, we're gonna tally the whole score up. We're gonna give it a score between zero and 100 and find out how good is this ski resort? Should you guys make a trip in the summer to Timberline? And that's a big reason why I wanted to make this ski resort review because it's almost summer. A lot of you guys as your ski resorts have closed down. So gotta head to Hood if you wanna go snowboarding and uh, let's cover the resort. <music> Now, before we jump into this video, let's mention today's video sponsor, the Evolution Sticker. If you guys want to support the dream, support the channel, uh, I have Evolution Stickers. These are some of the cool new patterns we have. We have like, obviously, white stickers, black stickers. And if you're a skier, we have the ski version of the Evolution Sticker with a bunch of cool colors and patterns for the ski sticker as well. That is linked in the description if you want to support the channel or you can snag them right there. Uh, snag some stickers, support the dream, any of the merch, and... Uh, that's how we can go to over 38 new ski resorts. And that's how many resorts we went to this winter, 38 brand new ski resorts. And so we have obviously 38 brand new resort reviews to come. And we've gone to 70 ski resorts in the US. So we'll have a ton of resort review is coming. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe. All right, now let's jump to the first topic of Timberline, the prices. Now I think lift prices were actually pretty fair at Timberline for a summer ski resort, $89 for the day. You can get a whole summer season pass for $1,000, $99. $999? And uh, yeah, I think that's totally fair. Honestly, it's a great price for a summer operated ski resort. One of the only ones in the US. I think that's an incredible price. So they got an eight when it comes to lift prices in the summertime. So definitely affordable, I think, for a summer ski resort. Now the price of the ski resort doesn't matter if it's not easy to get to. How easy is it? What's the ease of access? And I gave it a seven on the score. I think it's pretty simple to get to Hood. It is an hour and a half drive from Portland, uh, Oregon's airport, their international airport. So if you flew into Oregon, you have an hour and a half drive to literally to the lodge of the ski resort. So if you're staying on there or if you're just driving directly to the resort. Now, most people stay in like government camp or um, kind of down in like Sandy, Oregon. So depending on where you're coming from. But yeah, overall, I think it's a super simple drive right up to the mountain and it's a gorgeous drive as well. And then there is that one rock that you're supposed to be quiet by, but I'm, I'm never really quiet around that rock. But yeah, at seven when it comes to ease of access. Now lodging, you're gonna get there, you're gonna wanna stay there, right? You don't wanna just be there for a day, you don't wanna fly in, ride, and fly out. Like, we gotta stay there. And they do have the Timberline Lodge that's on the resort lodging, which is nice that the ski resort has that. But also government camp has a bunch of places you can stay, there's Airbnbs and stuff like that. There's also a lot of camping nearby in the summertime, so you can camp there. So when it came to lodging, I just gave it a five, pretty average score. They don't have like multiple options by the ski resort, they have their one lodge but there's a bunch of other options around too. So it got a five, it's average, pretty average place. If you want to go stay somewhere, go snowboard. But how are the lifts? Like I'm traveling here to go snowboarding. Am I going to be able to get to all the terrain that I want? And they got a five when it comes to the lifts. The reason why they got a five is it kind of depends on when you show up. If you show up earlier in the summer, uh, the first lift that takes you kind of halfway up the mountain is going to get you to some runs that you can do. Uh, as it gets to like July, it comes to, kind of becomes one run down. But you yeah, have the second lift that takes you all the way to the top of the mountain. It's a super gorgeous view right when you get out of it. And then that's going to access all your runs. And then you got the tow ropes in all of the parks, which are super handy. If you're lapping like the pipe, if you're lapping the jumps, if you're lapping the rails, you have a single tow rope for each one of those, uh, which is super handy. So they got a five when it comes to lifts. But what, what's the point of having lifts if you don't have runs to get to? So how are the runs now? Once again, depends on when you show up in the summer. The sooner you show up in the summer, the more runs you're gonna have. As the snow melts away, you're gonna get less. So they got a five when it comes to runs. You're gonna have what you want. You're gonna have some ungroomed, gnarly stuff. You'll have they do groom a little bit. And then you got the parks and everything. So one of the hardest things you're gonna come across is during the morning, you got all the ski racers, they get their lanes, and they're gonna take up the majority of it. But if you show up in the afternoon, 
they disappear and then you have this huge field that you can like kind of rip down and do whatever you want on. So they got a, an average runs. I mean, it's summer snowboarding. The amount of terrain you can ride in the summer, especially early summer is like spot on. Like you can't complain. It's a ton of terrain. <laughs> Now views and scenery, we're driving all the way to Oregon, the Mount Hood. It's gonna get an incredible score on the views and scenery because now it's like there's not many mountains around and then just boom, you have this huge volcano. And then as you go up it, sometimes it'll be like cloudy in town. You go up the chairlift and you get above the clouds, you snowboarding above the cloud and that view and that scenery is literally the coolest thing ever. It's like looking out of an airplane, but you're snowboarding, it's crazy. It's so hard to explain. So they get a 10. Yeah. Now it gets a 10 when it comes to views and scenery. Even when you're on the like on the resort and you're looking at the top of the mountain, you're like, what, that mountain's huge. But that's only 11,000 vertical feet. It's not even as tall as like Colorado mountains, but it's the only one around. It just feels so massive. Uh, and then once again, you're just hanging out above the clouds most of the time. It's super cool. They get a 10 when it comes to view and scenery. It's also like views for days. You see forever. The other cool thing about Timberline is you can also hike it in the summer, which is awesome. A lot of people like literally like practice mountain climbing all the way to the tip top. But if you're just an average person, you want to go on a nice scenic hike, you can get to do that in the summer as well, which is super sick, which kind of amplifies the views and sceneries because you can like hike around this way and get a better view or go this way and get some different view. So that's really cool as well. <laughs> Now let's get into the train park. One of the biggest things for me, the thing I absolutely love is riding in the park. How is Timberline's terrain park? Pfft, they get a 10 Yay! out of 10. Like Mount Hood, like, like High Cascade, you see all the pros up in there, dude. They got, they got a super pipe. They got huge jumps. They got medium sized jumps. They got rails, all the types of rails you want. They got some boxes, they got beginner features. They literally have everything you could want for progression slash for if you're a solid rider there. They get a 10 for the park, absolutely crush the park this last summer when I was there. Now, because of COVID, the pipe was only for people that were paying for the pipe, but the fact that it's even there, the fact they have a Subaru pipe dug into a trench, like it's so sick. 10 out of 10 uh, for the park. Now, I do have an employee score. Some people are like, you should cover conditions. The biggest reason why I never cover snow or conditions is that's hit or miss. It could be a bad snow year. I could show up literally at a great snowstorm. Like when I went on to the East Coast for a week this year, it snowed the entire time. We rode Powell the entire time on the East Coast, but we know that's not what the East Coast conditions are truly like. So that's why we don't cover snow conditions. And I've, I've in that spot, we have employees because an employee can make or break, break your trip. You can get an awesome employee that was there for you, kind of set everything up and you're like, that guy was amazing. Or you can get a really stinky employee that took your pass away or did something terrible and you just, it ruined your experience. So that's why we have this employee score. But thankfully I didn't run into either of those people. So they got an average score when it comes to employees. Nobody was incredible, but no one sucked. That the employees were all just normal. You know what I'm saying? Like normal employees. So they got an average score when it came to employees. Now, how's the food? If you're gonna be on the mountain, you're gonna wanna eat. And they got their their little lodge food that's pretty typical and normal. But then the, in the hotel, they have this fancy restaurant with like some of the best food I ever had in my entire life. It was very pricey, but it was incredible food. And because of that experience, and but there's not like a crazy amount of options and most people pack their lunches when they go there. They got a six because you can get really fancy food if you want, or you can just get the average Joe food. So a six when it came to food. Now the last score, and this one is what the would I go back? Cause I think that's valuable. Like if I go somewhere and I'm like, man, that was like a cool experience, but I wouldn't go back. Then you should probably know that if I'm like, dude, you should go back and hood, Timberline Ski Resort, Mount Hood has a 10 Yay! out of 10, I would go back. It was the coolest experience of my life. I think it's a truly a unicorn of a mountain. The overall like legit July snowboarding and the condition of the snow is incredible, as well as just how much you can snowboard and the park is insane and the people are just stoked that, dude, we're snowboarding in the summer. The views, all of it put together, absolutely gets a 10 when it comes to would I go back and snowboard at Timberline in the summer. Now, before we tally all these scores back up together, make sure you guys check out my resort map. It's linked in the description. I have a goal to ride every resort in the US. So my buddy Kenny made me a, a map that you can go to, it's a website and it has 
map of all the, the resorts, the, all the green ones are the ones we've ridden at. You can then click on them, watch the video there. So you can see if I've ridden at your ski resort, but also on the corner it has the resort reviews. So you can see how your resort did to others if we made a resort review on it. Overall, check out the website. It's super sick. That's linked in the description. Big shout out to Kenny for making that for us. And now that you checked out the map, it's time to come up with the score. <laughs> Drum roll. So out of 0 to 100, Timberline will be out of all of our little 0 to 10 scores and everything. They got a 71 out of 100, which is incredible. Obviously, 50 is an average ski resort, so they're 21 points above average. So I highly recommend going to Timberline in the summer. Who is it for? Mainly people that want to stay fresh on their snowboard, want to continue to ride terrain park throughout the summer. Or if you're a ski racer, and there's obviously I'd sign up for a camp and stuff, but ski racing is huge there in the summer. But is it worth a trip out there like for a week or a couple days? I think so. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. We spent 42 days out in Oregon camping in our camper and going up and going snowboarding. It was literally incredible. One of the best experiences of my life. So cool that I want to share it with you guys and I am hosting a summer camp. So if you want to come snowboard with me, in June, the first and second week in June. Uh, sign up for summer camp, it's linked in the description. The cool thing about that is I already know how to do hood. So if you're new and you're like, I don't know, like I want to go, but it's kind of scary, I think that it's all inclusive camp. Sign up for camp, all you gotta do is fly into Portland, Oregon, and then I can handle the rest for you guys. All your food, all the travel, it's all handled by me. And I'm gonna teach you guys how to be better snowboarders. It is an adult camp, so if you're a kiddo, I'm sorry. But if you're like 35, 20, like in any age group, if you can carve confidently down runs, sign up for camp. I can teach you how to give it a riding park as well as when we cover buttering and carving and all types of stuff. So summer camp is linked in the description. And this is the first resort review in a while. We're jumping back into these and the graphics and pop-ups and all the stuff is going to start evolving and getting better obviously as the channel gets there's 466 resorts i think is our total is at right now so i'm gonna be doing a lot of these resort review videos so if you do like them make sure you smash the like button so i know you're enjoying them but also if you're new subscribe to the channel so you don't miss them but you get it's cool because you're going to see these videos get better the pop-ups get better the editing get better uh and we're filming more of the new resorts that we go to with the idea of the resort reviews in mind uh timberline did not film for specifically a resort review. Uh, so these are just highlights from all of my vlogs and stuff, but get ready. I'm really excited about this series. We're gonna be pumping out two a week this summer and it's gonna be sick. I'm really just excited to, to continue to make new content for you guys, different style videos than just the vlogs or just edits and stuff like that. Cause ooh, why not make cool new stuff? I can literally sit in this chair though and talk to you guys for days. So with that team of guys, thank you so much for watching this video, for shredding with us today. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep evolving. We'll see you guys tomorrow with another video because we post daily snowboard content. I'm on top of the ocean, living like life ain't frozen, feeling my feet been chosen for something other than motion. Yeah. Mama told me I'ma be somebody. I ain't never gonna need nobody. No, no, I ain't never gonna need nobody. No, Cliff. Summer Camp 2020. We have 10 athletes. We have a big van.